Hello, I am Lux, and I have so many questions. And I'm Ember, and wow, Chrysalis, and it's not a two-part episode? And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode Lucky 13, The Mean Six. So many thoughts in this episode, I almost forgot to do part of the intro. The episode was handled really well, scarily well. It was pretty much another episode where they handled a similar theme from the comic book. And unlike the Tantibus episode with Princess Luna's self-punishment and all that horrible guilt and where the comic really handled the emotions better, this one handled Chrysalis's return and breaking up the friendship a lot better because there was a lot more progression and a lot more interaction. And the reason it worked better here too is it was complete accident on how the characters interacted. They weren't deliberately sent to mess up the main six. That was a side effect of them being around. And just being themselves because like the discord tainted versions of the main six, these creations are the polar opposites. Which is kind of interesting because apparently Chrysalis's spell was supposed to make an exact duplicate of the pony. But these weren't exact duplicates. They looked like them mostly, but there were little things off about them and not just their eye color. Their cutie marks were green, hairs were out of place, the hat was different. Well, not all the cutie marks were green. Applejacks happened to be totally green. But the cutie marks were off. The colors were slightly off. Expressions, obviously, off. My favorite of the off ones was Rarity. That was just... She was awesome. Mine! 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 Everything's mine! <laughs> and the expression just got more and more crazy. It was like Pink Amina crossed with Rarity crazy. And it was... The balance between the main six story and the mean six story was handled so well. It felt like it would work as a two-parter, but they split it so well that I'm like, I'm satisfied with the way it ended. But I'm still left with so many questions about what's going to happen next. Because I figured that we were going to have a two-parter because I thought the parties were going to run into each other in full since they were going to the same destination. And I thought the elements were actually being tainted by the actions of the copies because as they acted, we saw each mark temporarily turn dark. And I was like, they're tainting them? What's what's going on with this? Because I'm like, Chrysalis, you, you missed the point of how the elements of harmony actually work. These six won't be able to use them. Just like when Discord messed with the main six, they couldn't use the elements because they were no longer in tune with the elements. So your copies wouldn't have been able to use the elements. I thought they were going to end up creating some sort of negative element. Yeah, and it's just really interesting, like how the tree reacted and absorbed them. And the energy got transferred into the ground and how they got turned back into multicolored. Well, they didn't really get turned back into. They were changed into multicolored logs. So they were kind of semi turned back to what they were. Because it was turned back to wood and it was trees that were used in the creation because they didn't come from the whole tree because the trees peeled open and they rose from the centers. So that could be the core of each tree that created the form. I'm like, is this going to be something we're handling in this season? Are we going to have Chrysalis as the main bad guy or are we going to have... The principal, or are we going to have Chrysalis working with, not the principal, but the... The head of the Equestria School organization. Because they could theoretically team up if Chrysalis plays her cards right. Or maybe you could get a two-parter where it actually starts out with that head guy messing with the school. And because of him creating a distraction, Chrysalis is able to get in and do her thing. So we resolve his thing at the end and he like gets forgiven and stuff like that. And just as that happens, Chrysalis comes in and wrecks the whole thing. And the next episode is all about them solving Chrysalis. Of course, now we also have this whole elements of harmony thing. I'm like, 
That's going to come in later, right? You're not going to give me a Chekhov's gun right? with this, right? But the thing is, no one witnessed what happened except Chrysalis. Yeah, but it has to come in later. The audience witnessed it. That's the important part. I know, but I'm saying, what about the tree would be different enough for them to notice because they didn't notice anything just when they were at the campsite. So nothing is visually different from the tree at a distance. I'm not quite getting what you're getting at. I'm basically saying, how is the situation going to reveal itself to the characters? That's what I'm curious about. That's what I want to know. Like, don't just give me this information series and not use it is what I'm saying. So basically, the tree somehow managed to defend itself in theory because we don't know what the tree's intentions were. It reacted to the opposite element being right in front of it from the copies and it absorbed that energy and then it absorbed the copies, the energy of the copies, reducing them down to logs. But they weren't turned back fully because if they were, they wouldn't have been multicolored. So did Chrysalis take those logs with her? Will the main six find those logs later and wonder why they're there? Because they're not the color of any of the surrounding trees and they're not the colors of the Tree of Harmony. Will the tree itself be able to reach out and show them something? Because Table Tree Castle Map. So many questions this episode. It's, it's well handled, but the questions it brings up, I'm like, you have to answer these for me, series. You have to answer these questions. Don't do your bad writing and not answer these at the end of the season. You've done this to us before. Where you've brought up questions and you didn't answer them properly. <laughs> didn't answer them to our satisfaction. Kind of the same thing for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the interaction between the mean six and the main six was handled really well. I didn't feel cheated or like, well, that wouldn't work. The only spot that felt a little, um, not Shanghai, uh, forced was the main six forgiving each other. But I can understand how that would work, especially with Twilight going, okay, guys, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. You know, if you want to forget the whole thing, we'll go. We don't have to talk about it. And that gave everyone else a chance to go, I'm sorry. Even if they didn't do it, saying I'm sorry and moving on is a really good thing because they all went, okay, yeah, we may have done something to each other. We weren't around each other all the time, so we didn't see this, but we're sorry. We all forgive each other. Let's go have fun. And everyone has their own interpretation on it because... The real Applejack was pointing out how Starlight had never gone camping. So the real Applejack could interpret Starlight's reaction to, oh, I was laying it on a little too thick that you were inexperienced. And they've all gotten on Twilight's case about her scheduling. So that's very easy for her to believe because they've done it in real life. And the true main six did make references to her plans and everything while they were still together so out of all of them that was the most believable and because it was the most believable for the mean six to have said to her it was the most real of the apologies which is why it touched the other six because she was heavily scheduled you know Pinkie Pie was having fun but no we need to go on so we can have my fun Something else just suddenly started, like, gears started moving in my head about the evil Twilight. What was... I know she was scheming and stuff like that, but she wasn't really the opposite of her elements like the others were. Well, how do you make the opposite of magic? Because her element is magic, specifically the magic of friendship. So what's the opposite of magic and what's the opposite of friendship? Betrayal. Because she was betraying Chrysalis. Chrysalis. The opposite of friendship is betrayal. And the tree only really kicked in when she really started using magic. Which is Twilight's true element, the magic of friendship. So she started using the magic of betrayal? She used her magic to continue her betrayal. Because it was one thing when she was shielding herself. That's defensive. But she used her magic to attack Chrysalis, whom she was betraying, who gave her life, or whatever semblance of life a magical construct would have. Hmm. 
I wonder if you could call them wood golems. You could. That's kind of interesting because I'm starting to, it's starting to solidify more now in my head. By the way, we're recording this right after we finished watching the episode. Which is what we normally do, but apparently that wasn't enough time for Lux to think this time. Yeah, my brain's just slowly solidifying ideas like what Twilight said just before she got the energy pulled out of her and she was looking like a prune. The whole, like, you idiots, you messed it up for me or something like that. It's like, interesting. And that, that it's still the tree reacting like that. It's the fact that the... I can understand if they shine. Because in my head, that would be the reaction pulling them closer and purifying them. If it shined, I can understand that. But the fact that it turned black is what worries me. They temporarily turned black. And then the tendrils that it reached out... They didn't look like tree branches. They looked like tendrils, like fog. And the fact that you see the black energy go into the ground. So what is that possibly tainting? Or was it somehow purified by passing through the tree and the elements? Is the tree able to self-purify? Does it not need the pony elements? Can it now operate on its own? That's not what's bugging me. It's the, what, what really popped up into my head, especially when I saw it go into the ground, I was like, is it going to make the Everfree a little crazy again? Because I know part of the Everfree being crazy was the fact that the Tree of Harmony was dying before it got the elements back. And is it the fact that it put more dark energy to the ground, is that going to cause the Everfree to start being crazy again? So many questions and so many awesome things they could do. And still the whole, is this going to be involved in the season finale? Because we're like halfway through. You have to remember... Also, Chrysalis still has an image of Starlight because she took the picture, hmm. but she didn't take a piece of the mane. But with all that stumbling around, there could be something left at the campsite afterwards that she could scavenge. And you're right, they wouldn't have wrote in Chrysalis taking a picture of Starlight without them probably using it later. It's another thing that could be a Chekhov's gun. Because through her villainous monologue, we know that she needed the image, the hair, and the cutie mark. Well, not specifically a hair, but something from the pony. And I doubt she's just going to use it as a dartboard. Yeah, if I was her, I would have made multiple copies if I was going to use it for that, because I don't think she'd use it for darts. She's got this whole magic blasting thing going on. Also, how is Chrysalis sustaining herself? Because the changeling form supposedly has to feed on love so where has chrysalis been hunting because she obviously had a lot of magic because no problem with the cover-up to go in and be the photographer and no problem with casting the spell also i like what you pointed out with the cutie mark on the chrysalis as photographer it had a ladybug what did Cadence use to prove to Twilight that she was the real Cadence? I mean, it's hard to have coincidence when, you know, you're specifically doing animations. But did Chrysalis take the place of the true photographer? Was she in that photographer's image? Is that why the photographer was 10 minutes late? Ooh. And that could be how the main six find out. Because the photographer shows up later and they're all like, you were here, you took pictures. And she's like, no, I didn't. Something stopped me on my way, this old lady or something. Because she probably didn't reveal her true form, but she would have to somehow waylay the photographer. Though almost immediately, I pegged the photographer as Chrysalis. Her main style screamed Chrysalis to me. And just as soon as she walked in the door, I went, Villain! Villain! That's a villain! <laughs> bad guy! Bad guy right here! <laughs> this is a bad guy! Look! He's kicking puppies. Can't you see the bad guy? Look at all the evil things that he is doing. I am telling you right now, he is evil. I am pointing out something that Ember once told me about one of her stories that she read. Yes, yes. There, there was a book. It was kind of a historical fairy tale type retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And the... There were two villainous characters that ended up working together and as a shortcut, you know, to tell us that this person is evil, 
we just get these little internal monologue rants of bad things. It basically, go, okay, he's evil. We get it. It's like no character depth. And then the villain above him has even less character depth. You're like, wait a minute, where, where did this leap of logic come from? Obviously, he extracted some information from the heroine during this part where they met. But I'm missing how we went from here to there and why the villain is so obsessed with her. Because the villain was the entire time obsessed with getting rid of the hero. The heroine didn't show up until much later. So basically an evil villain version of the anime plot mallet. Pretty much. Though I don't see a lot of animes with that problem anymore. Kind of like how American cartoons used to have the intro plot mallet. As Animaniacs so eloquently put it, and now you know the plot. Ah, uh, so any particular nitpicks did you have with this episode? Because I don't think there was much really wrong with it. No, I mean, I was surprised that it wasn't a two-parter. I'm disturbed with the tree's behavior. What else has the tree been doing while nobody's there? Has it defended itself from other things? Has it been tainted by anything else? Has it absorbed other positive energy? Negative energy? Has anyone else interacted with it? Because it's near the castle of the two sisters, where the student six went during the season opener. Hmm, interesting. Also, remembering back to the rainbow-powered mode, the main six are so in tuned with the elements now that I think they actually contain the magic within themselves. They don't actually pull from the elements of harmony that are in the tree anymore. But we saw them put on the necklaces and tiara in the season 7 finale. Also, this episode was the first reference back to the rainbow mane that shall never be spoken of again. Except by Pinkie Pie and that awesome little... <laughs> the question is, did she actually transform or did she just do her Pinkie Pie thing? I'm pretty sure she just did her Pinkie Pie thing. You know, but that was basically the magic that was not talked of before or since. And the way I said that, all I thought of was naked mole rat <laughs> what is that that freaky thing <laughs> sorry folks he's been on a kim possible kick lately i actually haven't watched any episodes i just watched that music video and the theme song's been popping into my head a lot lately oh god now i have it in my head what is that <laughs> uh, okay moving on ah uh, so yeah, like I said, any nitpicks, anything else you want to go over in this episode? It, it's more all the speculation, and it's mostly near the end of the episode, because everything else was like, okay, this is just the interaction, and neither side realizing that they're dealing with not their group, but the other group. And it's like, okay, Chrysalis, you were right there, but also you just saw the tree destroy your minions. After seeing that, I wouldn't want to get close to it myself. I think she almost immediately flew away. Except that we kind of saw the silhouette against the moon after. Yeah, but they were right next to the cave. I'm guessing Chrysalis hightailed it out of there already because we could see the cave from the campsite. So the main six would have seen Chrysalis in the cave. So I'm guessing she already left the cave. But hadn't quite vacated the whole area yet. Because I want to know where Chrysalis has been hiding out and how she's been sustaining herself. Has she stayed within Ponylands? Has she been raiding other species? Because, you know, this season has all been more of a focus of every creature. Has she been picking on the yaks or the dragons or the griffins or the hippogriffs? I just had a crazy idea. What if we get the redemption arc we want for Chrysalis, well, at least a lot of people want for Chrysalis, but we don't get her transformed into a pretty other thing? She stays Chrysalis, and the redemption is her helping, like, the student main six take on the main six who have been corrupted by the corrupted elements of Harmony. And she knows about it, and because of what's going on, she teams up with Starlight and the student main six... And that's how she gets redeemed. Because she's witnessed what happened in that area. So she's the only character that knows what happened. Interesting. But the question would be, why would she care? Yeah, that's what I haven't gotten to yet. But I'm like, that would be an interesting way to take this. 
it would because I still want to know more about the changelings overall. You know, if the form Thorax and the and then Acellus and the others are in, is their true form? How did Chrysalis have them in the other form? How were they birthed in that form? How did Chrysalis ever first come to that form? At the very beginning of this episode, I said so many cool questions. Uh, we probably shouldn't speculate on them. Two more in this episode. Maybe we'll do like something later. I don't know. I I think we already did a speculation and headcanon episode a couple seasons back. Yes, I know there's been a few seasons since then, but we're we're not getting that far ahead in the schedule. Nope. So, final thoughts? A really good episode. It left me wanting to know more, but not in such a way of, okay, this should have been in the episode. You know, if it had been a two-parter, if the copies in the originals had run into each other in full, seeing duplicates, if Chrysalis had run into the main six, if the main six had actually gotten the elements of harmony, or in anti-harmony, you know, basically like every Sentai show when you have to fight your double. And just interesting how Chrysalis is so dismissive of Starlight in the beginning of, oh yeah, here, photo taken. But Starlight and Twilight are the main targets of Chrysalis's revenge, especially Starlight, because Starlight's the one who cost her the kingdom. But when you look at all of that, okay, yes, Starlight definitely more than Twilight, but wouldn't the royal couple be rather high on the list, considering they're the ones who beat you in that finale? Because, yes, Twilight was the one who saw through your disguise and you banished, you know, you got her out of the way and she brought back the real Cadence. But it was the real Cadence love and magic and her connection with Shining Armor that defeated you. I think she's over that and has a new revenge target. Well, yeah, because that was just a minor setback. She still had her hive. She still had her kingdom. She was still in control. Being in control is a big thing for Chrysalis. Hmm. Going back to what you said, I, I wonder if it's something that corrupted her then corrupted everything else. Like, she was something else. I don't think she was anything as pretty as the current forms we have. But, but like, a neutral form between this and what they are now... Because I don't think they were ever that full of love, but I think they may have been something that was more neutral and then got corrupted more towards the dark side, as it were. But this episode is handled really well, and even though it brings up a lot of questions, it still satisfies you in the way it ends. You're not sitting there going, why isn't there another episode? Like a lot of episodes that you're like, this should have been a two-parter. There should have been more time for this. This episode, you're like, yeah, that was just about the right amount of time for this. You're like, wow, they really resolved it all because they were right there at the tree. They were showing that they did not have the elements, that they were the opposites of the elements. And then they were defeated before the main six ever got there. But it was the way they were defeated that leaves you with the questions. Because we've never seen the tree act like that. Well, hopefully the rest of the season will answer some of those questions. So, wrap things up. Mm-hmm. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episode 13, The Mean Six. You guys are here again? Yeah, yeah. This is kind of becoming a regular thing. People are going to start talking. So, um, it's still pretty standard here at the end of the episode. There's a like button, there's a subscribe button, there's a comment button. There's links to see Lux's art and to check out for commissions to get art. There's Patreon where you can pledge and vote on art. And there's coffee where, you know, you kindly give us money with nothing in return except a thank you note. And not that everyone hasn't plugged their Patreon a million times, but it does start out at a dollar and it's a monthly thing. Coffee is one time, no obligation, but it works in increments of three. So 
kind of a either or on pricing because you could pledge one dollar on Patreon for three months and get three sketches, or you could do one pledge on coffee, done and over with. The choice, as always, is yours. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.